Welcome back to Not-for-Profit and Public Sector Organizations. This is topic two, fund accounting, the basics. First, a definition. The handbook definition of fund accounting is that fund accounting are the collective accounting procedures resulting in a self-balancing set of accounts for each fund established by legal, contractual, or voluntary actions of an organization. Elements of a fund can include assets, liabilities, net assets, revenues, and expenses, gains and losses where appropriate. Fund accounting involves an accounting segregation, although not necessarily a physical segregation of resources. So what does that mean? Well, what that definition means in practice is that there are often multiple sets of statements, one for each identified fund. Each fund would have an income statement, balance sheet, and statement of cash flows, although that's not necessarily the case, and we'll circle back to that at the end of the video. These funds would also be presented in totality so that all funds can be viewed together if needed. The funds are typically separated on the basis of function or type of resource, for example, a general fund and a capital fund. The statement of financial position for a fund is used to show the excess assets over liabilities in an organization. This is referred to as the fund balance, where ideally the fund balance is positive in the same fashion as in a private entity would want the equity accounts to also be positive. The statement of revenues and expenses show the items of revenues and expenses as well as totals to the excess of revenues over expenses. Again, similar to, um, to a private company's income statement, you would want the excess of revenues over expenses to generally be positive. Let's look at an example. I mentioned earlier how the Boys and Girls Club of Canada is a private not-for-profit. So not a private company, but a private not-for-profit organization. Okay, so when I'm looking at their financial statements, and yes, you'll notice I'm looking at December 31st, 2018, and that is almost three years ago. Why am I using a 2018 set of financial statements? Well, that will become evident in a later video, but for now, I want to point out that it is very much relevant to today's discussion. Here, you'll see the general fund. So otherwise, sometimes referred to as uh, the unrestricted account, but we'll just say call it general. It's like it doesn't fit anywhere else. It goes in the general fund. And then we have the restricted funds and our restricted funds, again, recall, are restricted by some form of legal, contractual or voluntary actions by the organization. So here we have a trust fund from the J.W. McConnell Foundation as well as the scholarship fund. So without reading any further into the financial statements, into the notes, that which would need to have an explanation as to which, <clears throat> excuse me, um, what each of those restrictions are, you can kind of use your intuition and start to get a sense before confirming. Uh, and this is likely something that restricts the use of funds to scholarships. And then this uh, fund is likely to do with a donor and they perhaps have a specific set of restrictions on what the fund may be used for. All right, let's go back to uh, some, some theory and application. While in the most straightforward form, fund accounting can replicate each of the financial statements for each fund, this is not required. For example, the operating statement of revenues and expenses could be presented on a fund basis, and the other statements could be presented on a non-fund basis. That is actually the case for Boys and Girls Club of Canada, and I will circle back to that in just a second. So what it is important is that the organization performing the accounting should include descriptions of each fund being reported on, as well as discuss the inclusions and nature of the fund in writing, that is, in the notes to the financial statements. Okay. Back to Boys and Girls Clubs of Canada. So here you'll see, while in the last example, 
we looked at their statement of revenues and expenses. Here, we're looking at their balance sheet. So their statement of financial position. And what we notice here is that there aren't a bunch of different columns. So that is that right there shows that they are not choosing to separate how much cash is in each fund. So when you don't have a bunch of columns, that is your first kind of spidey sense that perhaps they aren't applying fund accounting to this particular financial statement. Okay, but here we still have some pretty good information um, as far as the restricted fund, uh, restricted funds, pardon me, of JW McConnell Foundation's trust fund and their scholarship fund, as well as what is left in kind of the remaining other bucket, the general fund. So together, in aggregate for 2018, you'll see that there are positive balances, so an excess of assets over liabilities for each of the funds. And that kind of gives us some nice comfort if we were, say, perhaps the JW McConnell Foundation who wants to see what is left as far as um, their fund is concerned, as well as what is the perhaps power, what are the what is the economic power left in the scholarship fund? And then what is left to drive day-to-day -day operations as well as long-term strategic planning, which that is not um, identified as a restriction. So again, really interesting to kind of see the choices involved for non-for-profit accounting in the sense that it really is user-focused as are, you know, private company and public company financial statements, that the difference here is that your users have a different a sensitivity. Your users care about different things. Uh, by very definition, uh, a user of a not-for-profit organization, they don't care necessarily about you know the bottom line, those revenues over expenses being the biggest possible that they can be in this year and future years. Rather, they are more interested in saying, how are these funds being used? Are they hitting the not-for-profits uh, targets? Are they you know, meeting their mandates? Are they fulfilling their objectives, which are not to maximize uh, profit? Okay, time for a question. On the statement of financial position for a, a not-for-profit using fund accounting, the quote, fund balance is best likened to which section of a private company's balance sheet? Is it A, the assets of the organization? B, the net equity of the organization? C, the liabilities of the organization? Or D, the revenues of an organization? The answer is B. Since the fund balance is the net value of assets less liabilities, it is most similar to the equity of a private organization. Okay, uh, wonderful job. Um, I'm gonna ask you if you didn't completely kind of grasp what was going on here, at least at a high level, to stop and rewatch the video because it's only gonna get a little bit more intense from here in the next two videos. So I ask you to add to your mind map and take a second and then start the next videos. I'll see you there.